Coursera has millions of students and thousands of courses. From public health to computer science, from social science to math and logic, they even have a course on chicken behavior and welfare. But is this platform worth your time and money in 2021? We're taking a look at Coursera.com today and the video starts right now. What's up developers? It's Real Tough Candy from realtoughcandy.io popping back on for another video review. Today we're talking about Coursera. Now basically Coursera is a video based online learning platform. Nothing out of the ordinary there. They have thousands of courses, not just in computer science, but public health, social science, math and logic. Yes, even courses on chicken behavior and welfare. So some of these courses are kind of esoteric, but Coursera also works with popular universities. They partner with Yale, Johns Hopkins, University of Pennsylvania, and dozens more. And they also offer quite a few accredited college degree programs plus full master's degrees. So right away, the platform gives off this high trust factor vibe. And that is one of the biggest things I think that differentiates this platform. Just right off the bat from the other ones out there. Let me talk about my other first impressions. All of them were pretty good. The landing page was your standard sales pitch. That said, there is this join for free button right here that captured most of my attention. Then once I logged in, I started exploring my options. The navigation was decent. It was easy for me to find the various subjects that Coursera offers. And of course, as a software developer, my first couple of clicks are naturally landing me here on the computer science page. The expensive degree programs from the universities were featured at the top. And again, this is something unique that I just don't see on any other platforms really adding to that trust factor. But then as I scroll down here, Coursera is showing a bunch of various paths, specialization, certifications, and suggestions. Almost all popular computer science topics are offered on Coursera. We're talking Java, C++, we're talking JavaScript, blockchain, Linux, iOS, data structures, HTML and CSS, and lots more. And as a side note, if you're into data science or wanting to explore data science, they had a nice selection of data science topics too. Python, Tableau, TensorFlow, many more. Now checking out the computer science section, there are many courses offered by some pretty well-known colleges, universities, top tech companies, University of Michigan, Rice University, Duke University, Princeton, Google, IBM, just lots of name drops here. And most of the web development courses are designed for newbies. So we have well-known institutions teaching topics that are generally for new people. Ruby on Rails, an introduction, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript for web developers, modern JavaScript, ES6, web application development, basic concepts, programming foundations, lots of foundational stuff, lots of basic stuff. There are some intermediate courses and one or two advanced ones. Let's talk about these guided projects by Coursera. Now, aside from the courses, the video courses, there's also this little section called guided projects, but, this is, this is the weird thing, these projects, and I'm using air quotes, you can't see me. And the reason I'm using air quotes with the word projects is because most of these are actually interactive mini courses where you can practice your coding skills. And the concept is actually pretty cool. So Coursera redirects you to an online cloud environment where you'll get to access a virtual machine. And then from here, you can not only code along, but also explore the entire virtual machine. So for example, you can run commands on the command line, you can run other programs, you can toggle between programs, all right in your browser, no setup necessary. And to the right of your virtual machine is the lecture window. And this is where the instructor shows you how to execute a certain task. So this is where the video plays. And then on the left, you can code along or do whatever else. And I thought this was a really cool feature. So how much does Coursera cost? Great question. Uh, at first I thought Coursera was free, but no, Coursera also costs money. Well, Coursera could cost you money, but you could also hit the little audit button that will give you a course for free if you're not in the mood to pay. Yeah, it, it was confusing. I, I was confused. The price structure is one of my dislikes about Coursera. I could literally do a 20 minute video on the pricing, but right here is where the payment options are. And as you can see, there are just a lot of twists and turns to it. The abbreviated answer is that these courses do cost money, but you can take most of them for free by hitting the audit button. And the audit button, if you go through the audit option, you don't get to have the extra perks like submitting assignments for grading or getting a certificate of completion, but you do get access to the video. So you can code along and follow along there. Uh, but again, the pricing 
is just, it, it's kind of a mess. Here is what I do like about Coursera. Number one, I like the accessibility of the courses. What do I mean? It's that audit button, baby. You can press that little button and bam, the entire course is available to you for free. There's also a financial aid button option on a lot of these courses. So if money's tight, you can fill out their application and see if you're eligible. Number two, I really like the selection of the courses. Yeah, most of these are introductory, but if you're into continuing education, there are some super interesting topics on Coursera. From a software developer perspective, I was admittedly a little underwhelmed. However, that chicken welfare course looks really cool. And there are, there are many more like that. They're like, huh, this could be an interesting hobby. Uh, so I do like the selection in general. Number three, I'm really digging this cloud workspace for some of their software developer courses. You can actually just use one browser window to watch the lecture and work on code, customize it, move stuff around, access files, and of course, edit your code right in the browser. It saves a ton of setup time. That said, Here's what I don't like about Coursera. Number one, I don't like that the course publication dates aren't listed anywhere. That's a little shady. Like, do you not want people to know when this thing was released? Even something like a last updated tab with a date would suffice. I'll take anything. I just need some sort of date. Dates are really important when we're talking about software and in particular web development. Working with older releases and versions of software makes your learning environment just straight up hell. You'll spend a lot of time just trying to get stuff to work super frustrating. And this is time that could be spent actually learning and working with relevant technologies. Once I did start getting into the curriculum and the projects, the outdated and inconsistent nature of many of these Coursera courses started popping out. So I'm going to put a black square here instead of showing you the actual course I'm using as an example, because I think these instructors did work hard on it, but there are a lot of red flags. What am I talking about? Well, as I mentioned earlier, Coursera offers interactive short courses called projects. Air quotes. I don't know why they call them that since the ones I saw have nothing to do with the project. They're just like little code alongs where you can practice basic coding stuff. So there is this JavaScript project. I spent about an hour exploring it. Basically, it's just you coding along with JavaScript concepts. Anyway, for most of the project, you're working with ES5 stuff. And then for like five minutes at the end, they show you two things related to ES6. It's just really patched work together and inconsistent. It's almost like they recorded it in 2015 and ES6 came out and somebody in the faculty lounge was sipping on a macchiato like, yeah, Barb, better throw that thing in about fat arrow functions in at the end. Just like, this This is inconsistent. And then in the written portion, the author refers to getting your hands dirty with React as part of the project, chorus, whatever the f*** you want to call it, when React isn't even touched upon in the entire project. What? Inconsistencies like those, they just, they were adding up very fast. And ultimately, they just take away from the learning process. And that was when Coursera, for me, started lacking authority and reliability, which is probably not the tone they're shooting for when some of the world's most respected colleges and universities have signed on to the platform. But on the bright side, this is not an unfixable problem. I think a good proofreader and some bits of editing and updating would really improve the value of Coursera. God knows I have my share of typos and mistakes with all the stuff I publish, so I get it. But according to Forbes, Coursera is worth over a billion dollars. <laughs> They can afford a few course testers and some editors. Come on, Coursera, let's see that upgrade. And as the saying goes, you get what you pay for. And with this audit option, you don't have to pay a nickel for a lot of this stuff. But still, if I was a paying customer on the monthly plan or yearly pro or whatever else plan, I would not be satisfied with a lot of the guts of these courses. The protein is kind of falling apart in places. Finally, the last big thing I didn't like on Coursera is the pricing structure. Coursera's pricing structure is way too confusing. Some courses are free, some are not. Many let you audit them so the videos are free, but the extra stuff like submitting assignments and earning a certificate isn't. And if you don't like those options, you can also do Coursera Plus. And if you don't like that option, you can apply for financial aid. And if you don't like that, you can apply for a scholarship, but not all courses have those. You can also prepay for an entire specialization or you can pay month by month. And I'm sure I'm missing seven or eight more options. Okay, I admit, 
I do appreciate the flexibility, but it again comes back to the inconsistencies of Coursera. I think there are too many inconsistent pricing options, and it's just not organized in a way that makes sense to me. I'd like to see a quick side-by-side -side comparison of the pricing plans with check marks or something to see what features are included with each pricing plan, kind of like what Pluralsight does, where you can just take a peek real quick and do some fast comparisons. I don't want to poke around for an hour or two trying to figure out all my plan and payment options. Final verdict, is Coursera worth it? All in all, for software developers in particular, I think Coursera is below average. Some of the individual courses may be worth it. I'm talking about as an overall platform. I would explore your other options before making a long-term commitment. I think Coursera's strongest suit isn't the material itself, but the perceived trust factor. For example, when you have places like Johns Hopkins and Duke University sign on, it's a lot more legitimate in the eyes of potential employers and clients compared to Joe Schmo's platform of computer hotness. And if Coursera can fix the bigger issues I mentioned earlier, this platform would be awesome. The next question is, is Coursera worth it for non-software developers, just a general audience? I think Coursera can be a good transitional platform for people in general who are used to learning in a live classroom setting, but for whatever reason are now having to transition into online learning. You know, if you've never done online learning before, it takes a lot of work. A lot of these platforms are very DIY, very do-it-yourself, where it's 100% on you to figure everything out. But from the courses I checked out, Coursera has a pretty good onboarding process. The courses I explored had fairly decent intro videos and oftentimes syllabi so you can know what to expect. So that helps make the transition easier too. Let me hear from you. What do you think of Coursera? Let me know in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.